think it's working. Hello if it is. I'm just trying to get ourselves set up here on the live video for you all to have a nice watch. So bear with me two seconds while I get this sorted. This will happen. Yeah, we're live now. <clears throat> Sorry everyone, there's just two of us because the big boss man is in Italy, but unfortunately um, he's actually not well at the minute. So before we get on with the football show, Breton made himself in shape like a sandar. Uh, thoughts with you while you're on your sick bed. Not nice for you to have you go on holidays. We you know how much you're looking forward to it and for you to be ill. So um, hopefully you get better soon, boss. Um, but stay sick tomorrow and don't tell Kerry so that you can watch the first game in the World Cup. Aye. Aye. Or don't worry about tomorrow. Recover tomorrow but then have a relapse on Friday. Ah, uh, yeah, full day on Friday then. Uh, you might actually play the blinder here by getting ourselves sick so that you can watch the World Cup. Respect if you have. But <clears throat> yes, it is... World Cup Eve, Jake, and I know from texting you all week that you're one excited young man, mm. you can't wait for this to kick off, um, and typical sort of football that the whole thing is going wild, mm. and Spain have sacked their manager. Yeah, I suppose on the eve of the tournament, two days before their first game in the tournament, to be managerless for I know they've they've since appointed Euro there as as he was their sporting director now he's going to be the manager during during the tournament. Extra love Edo manager. Excellent, and you know Expo Wonders of course played <laughs> under Sal Allardyce who said that he was a great man for the job. It's good to know that he's got Sam's back and like that really <laughs> makes the decision all yeah. the better. But you know. Um, I think personally that it was a bad decision from Lobotegi and Real Madrid to announce that he would be their new manager before the World Cup. Yeah. I think they should have saved that to be on the World Cup or whenever Spain go out of the World Cup. Because then it puts Lobotegi under pressure and also the Spanish FA under pressure and the Spanish players, of course. Yeah, it's, um, in my opinion, sort of stinks of Real Madrid. Uh, being a bit arsy about the whole thing and sort of we also know that there's been things where Real Madrid have been Real Madrid have been charged with different tax things and stuff and they maybe think that uh, things haven't gone their way and certain things in Spain and for them to almost force his hand into telling um, the Spanish FA this is what's happening five minutes before it was going to be released it sort of it sort of stinks to me that I was re- this, I would blame Real Madrid really to be honest. I have seen people have been blaming Lopetegui and <clears throat> he's got a lot of backlash from from Spanish fans from other teams for doing this because he joined Real Madrid. But of course, um, like if Real Madrid come to you and you know you're going to be going after a World Cup, it's hard to say no. Like it is hard. It's hard to I suppose turn down those advances. Like again, the surprise thing here is that he wasn't really mentioned. Mm as a name to, to take over from Sudan and then just on the eve of a massive tournament on a tournament that you think Spain could possibly win yeah. we have him being sacked you know I just think it has severely hampered the chances that Spain once had of winning this tournament oh right. massively like but would you like do you think uh, would you be of the other opinion that it's all Lapetegi's fault, or would you sort of? Um, I personally, of course, as you know, uh, Lapetegi is partly responsible and is oh, equally yeah. responsible as Real Madrid are, um, because he signed a contract. How much do contracts matter in today's, um, I suppose, climate? Is to be debated. But he did sign a contract. He should have been loyal. He's prepared a team for a massive tournament. Spain want to perform well in the tournament and he just betrays the key word that's used in Spanish media today by as you say a lot of people who are anti Real Madrid but also have a more balanced approach is betrayal. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's it's really wrapped or shot the country like it that. Has. It's really like um You know and it hasn't even divided the country. It's like ten percent are sort of like Real Madrid fans are like, Yeah, come on and then the ninety percent are just sort of like so much And it's totally unnecessary. You yeah. know, this could have all been avoided. Yeah. But look, good luck to Euro now as he takes over the reins. And, you know, good luck to to the team. It's going to be very difficult for them. I think they'll actually... <clears throat> I still think they'll be alright. Do you think they'll win it though? Um, no, I think Brazil are in the driving seat now. 
That's good for Brazil, uh, because Aiden got... Aiden got Brazil on our family streets. Uh, by yeah. default, I support in Brazil. Yeah, and Sarah got Costa Rica, which we were already yeah, supporting. Course. So by default, I support in Costa Rica. Uh, again. I still, I think Brazil will win it now. That's up, obviously World Cup E. We're, we're both buzzing. We've both been thinking about it. I do think this game on Friday night, though, against Portugal is mental. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, have you seen what's happened to the support, uh, Sporting CP, Sporting Lisbon players? Of course they've had it in resignation. <laughs> yeah. Including Jason Martins, who's obviously going to come to Arsenal. I would, I, that would be a brilliant sign for Arsenal. And I think Liverpool should go after Rui Patricio, the goalkeeper. Certainly. Um, for, and, and if Chelsea lose Thibaut Corto, obviously to keep Brandon in the loop because... And well, also William Carvalho there as well. Carvalho, a, a great yeah. centre midfielder. Maybe not of the top clubs. Not for the top clubs. Um, or why not? Well, like, would you have thought Mo- Mohamed Salah was going to be back in it? True. And look what true, he did. Do you, true. Know, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yes, there's six top right. clubs in England, like. Yes, so, yeah, that's true. Um, you know. I think he would get in. Well, I suppose if Greenish is going to get in, then, well, well that's is the, he going to be going right to a top six it. club? <laughs> well, he's well, going are they a top <laughs> six club? Well, they're fifth. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're above us, yes, yeah. but realistically, you know, I suppose Carvalho's entitled to. Yeah, really yeah. Well, um, it'll be interesting to see what happens to those sporting players, and if that all goes through, I know the owner that, that caused the whole uproar, and if you haven't seen what's happened here, basically, they... It was the league that they had more or less missed out on, and the owner Bruno, I think it's Fernandez, if I'm not wrong, he <clears throat> he more or less let the ultras in the training facilities, who then kicked lumps out of some of the players. Like, I think Bash Dost, the Dutch striker, ended up with a massive gash in his forehead, and you you'll be able to get that story. Yeah, I'll try and find it. And Absolutely post it shocking. On. Oh, horrific! I'll try post it on the Sports Bubble Facebook and Twitter for some of you to read uh, tonight because it's interesting reading. Like it's a completely bumper story. But that game, they already don't really like each other. Portugal and Spain, and that game's even massive. The Iberian derby. The Iberian derby. Like, the Iberian is, derby, you know, like um, is there another? Like, what else are you looking forward to? Are you just looking forward to kicking off? Now? I'm actually excited. I'm about excited. Russia against Saudi Arabia. But that's what these sorts of eves do to yeah. you, you know. Still to this day, you're excited on Christmas Eve. Santa no longer comes, unfortunately, but you're still excited. Just for the it's adults, he comes for the kids. Obviously, he doesn't come for us anymore. No, no, yeah, he, he comes, comes for the, comes for the kids. Yeah. He doesn't really bother adults. Kids don't really wear it. Yeah, but you know, um, unfortunately, we don't have a Santa Claus moment to look forward to in the opening day in the sense that Saudi Arabia and Russia will not be a footballing... I know, extravaganza. Classic. Yes. It could turn out to be. It could turn out to be, you know, for, in its own way. But, you know, I just think that it's good to get this this tournament moving. And the sooner that it gets started, we get over that opening ceremony, which I look forward to watching and and the game. And hopefully Russia start with a win. Okay. Because just to get them into the tournament. It's nice when the host, yeah, Big Dave has them as well in the sweeps. But uh, it will be Friday. When you start to get, you know, the cockles of your heart start to warm. Yeah, and when everyone at work will be slipping on the BBC website and firing it on in the background, or I just recently started a new job and the boardroom is being set up with a TV and all for us to watch the matches. Um, if only Northern Ireland or the Republic were there, you know. Well, that's what we said, yeah, it would have been brilliant if both of those teams had been there. Unfortunately, they're not, but uh, we'll get behind other teams and I'm sure we'll enjoy it. Now, before we go on, sort of, and... Um, Talk about all the things we want to get involved in the World Cup. We were, as you might have been noticed, every day from Tuesday, I think it was, last week, we've been doing World Cup previews of each group, myself, Jake and Brenton. Um, and Group H is the last group for us to do. And um, myself and Jake have looked at it today and we're going to talk about it now. This group is also important for our English fans and our Belgian fans and Panama fans and Tunisia fans because mm-hmm. this is who you're going to be playing potentially in the next round. When you look at it, Jake, it's Poland, Senegal, Colombia and Japan. Yes. What team stands out for you straight away as the favourite? I suppose straight away as the favourite would be Colombia, yeah. given their record at the past World Cup, and um, given you know the birth, the great moment for James Rodriguez, which earned him his move to Real Madrid, and of course that didn't work out, mm-hmm. but he's starting to come back into the form that we did see, and that ma- what about that goal against Uruguay? You know those sorts of moments from Colombia. David Ospina, the world's greatest goalkeeper in Nets, <laughs> you know. Colombia are the team that excite me in this group, really, um, and I expect them as oh. 40 to 1 favourites of the tournament. Don't expect them to win the tournament or maybe even to go as far as they did. 
in the last World Cup. But I do expect them to top this group. They have Falcao as well playing in the first World Cup, which is brilliant. I'm, I'm a big fan Delighted of Falcao. To see that. I still, I, I, sometimes I still catch myself watching some of his goals, especially sorry Manchester City fans. That chip against City two seasons ago in the Champions League knockout stages was just absolutely ridiculous. This this, this arguably could be the group of clinical goal scorers. I think you know? this is um, on paper like one of the most exciting groups. It in the is. Cup. Like, yeah. You were saying about Colombia and, and certainly I would probably put Colombia in my favourites but then Poland and Senegal I put them level because they're two great strikers. Yeah, and the, the key game in this one is actually the second the second game in this group is Poland-Senegal. You know it's their, both of their those teams first game and whoever wins that will finish second. I'm convinced of it. Yeah. You know if it finishes a draw then it's still to play for whoever wins that game is in they're a good for a shape. longer haul in yeah. the tournament as They're far as I can shape. see it. I think Senegal will come out of this group. Mm. Um, that's not just me saying that because of uh, Mane. I, I, I do think Mane will help with his pace. I think Senegal are quite a decent side. They have, um, I think it's, uh, what do you call him? Badu or Kaida from, or Balde, sorry, from, yes, Monaco. Right, from Monaco. More pace and another striker going forward. They're, they're a decent little side. Yeah, they've also got, you know, um, for... The West Ham midfielder Kiate. Oh, Kiate, he's, uh, Kiate you know, he's, he's a very, he's good very, player, very player, powerful yeah. player, like a, um, in midfield. Yeah, no, I, I do. I think I think Senegal come out of this group. I think they'll run Colombia very close. Mm -hmm. Like Colombia have um, Lucas Muriel, they have on the players the Juan Guardado, they have um, players like um, David Dav Sanchez, what do you, uh, Davison Sanchez. Davison Sanchez, sorry, and they have um, Yanni. Ah, oh, it's just going to be the big tall centre half of Barcelona sign in January. Um, it's got his names. If anybody knows his name and can Google it while we're doing this live, please fire it in because I just forgot it. Yeah, well, he's obviously brilliant then, Philip. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he's obviously set the world I've, 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 got, I've, got, I've got one of my many World Cup. Yeri Mina, boom, told you. Yeah. I've got one of my many World Cup um, magazines and books that I've bought and lead up to this. I think Sarah's going to kill me when she realizes how much money I've spent on it. They do. They have a really good side, Colombia. I, I, I would fancy actually Colombia to get to the quarterfinals again. I think they'll sure. cause whoever comes second from England and Belgium's group. I think they'll cause them problems. Could well do. Could well do. You know. Yeah. Okay. You haven't talked about Poland either. Yeah. Now Poland obviously is the country um, for which Lewandowski plays his trade. You know. And Lewandowski, we must say, had an absolutely superb qualifying campaign. He was the top scorer in European qualifiers. You know, 16 goals he got. Um, they got to the quarterfinals of the European Championships, this Poland side. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are similar players. Blasikowski's there. Um, you know, they've Milik, got... Of course. From Napoli. Um, you know, they, they've got very, very good players. And they're a solid unit. Yeah. You know? And I think with Lewandowski's firepower up front, they do have a significant chance. And I don't think, you know, you're obviously sort of clear cut there that Senegal will go through a second. I think Poland can have something to say about that. That, as you said, that first game for the two teams against it's each massive. other, I think that's going to be Monday, maybe. Could well be, yeah. Um, that is absolutely huge. I hope that is on at 7 o'clock on Monday night, because um, mm. everyone's working on it. Now, to be fair, the major problem, and this maybe is where Mane might capitalise on Kieta Valde, for example, is that this Polish team has moved from whereby they were quite counter-attacking, lean defensively and counter-attacking. Now they're more possession-based. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that usually when we were, you know, in, in the past when we would have watched Poland, it would have been those counter-attacking like Pe Lukas Piszczek, Blazikowski, Lewandowski, these fast wing players feeding the front man. It's slightly changed. Obviously a team evolves and they get older, mm -hmm. so they're not as fit to do that. And they're more possession based now. Now that has come as a cost because, believe it or believe it or not, they're not actually as solid defensively. And during qualifying, they lost to Denmark 4-0. Oof. Denmark are not a free-scoring side. And of course, you can't read too much into individual results. They're free-scoring when they're in Dublin, but... <laughs> well, you know, I was going to just brush over I know, we couldn't, we couldn't. But, you know, this is a team that maybe will struggle defensively, but going forward, they will pose problems. Oh, if he gets anywhere near the, the, the box with the, with the ball, uh, Lewandowski's going to the back of the net. That's right, and he's, he's just not scored two in their most recent preparation game against Lithuania. Again, 
you have to tamper that against the call the yeah. quality of the opposition but two goals at international level before we, uh, we Japan as well in the group Japan are always one of those teams that I would have a little tiny soft spot for do you remember they had Inamoto that's that right. Arsenal that's right. the 2002 World Cup obviously they hosted um, I enjoyed watching them they still have decent places like Shinji Kagawa um, and the Kizuki, Kizuki Honda Kizuki Honda who's now playing yeah. in Mexico but he's still I think he was a top goal of course goal you've got the Leicester stalwart that is Shinji Okazaki Okazaki he, well if he's playing against any Liverpool goalkeepers so if they do go through and Courtois gets injured he's playing against Mignolet he's going to score like, because he loves scoring against Liverpool so that could be the well, you know, there, he's, he's I are... cannot see Japan going through Japan sacked their manager recently and they brought in a, an ex-stalwart I'll get his name here that's just going out of my head um, but, and they've actually Strangely enough, he is instead of what you might think Herrera, Herrero might do, and um, when he takes over yeah. at um, Herrero, at at Spain and, and keep things the same, obviously because they have a, a certain way. This new manager and it's Akira, uh, Akira Nishino, who's an ex-player and he's a bit of a uh, cult hero in Japan. He has decided to change it, and they've gone to possession-based football. Now they played Ghana recently, and they were beat two 0 but they were done by set pieces, but. They played really well, like, and I watched and I watched highlights of it. Like, I didn't watch the match, but they played really well. And they created some some chances. So it's, it's interesting to see that a couple of months and they've changed now the way they're playing. Everybody's writing them off. Do you think it bodes well for the group? So against the likes of Senegal and Poland, that's their main opposition in terms of taking something from. I suppose. I, I, this, I, maybe against Poland, I think the pace of Senegal is going to cause teams in this group serious issues. You know the the interesting thing there. You talk about a, ma- a former player who is now in charge of. Japan, we have the exact same in um, Senegal. Ali Osise was yeah. their captain in 2002 World Cup, yeah. the only previous time they've qualified for the World Cup. Who did they beat on their way to the quarterfinals, their best place finish, obviously, at the tournament? France, who were the right. holders of the World Cup First game. on their duty, or and uh, sorry, the holders of, of the World Cup at um, that time. Yeah, yeah. Didn't Champ would have gone. I don't think he was playing. Was Zidane was there? Yes, Zidane was there. Zidane was there. So was you know there. that's um, a massive, uh, I suppose, incentive for the Senegalese players because they've got this stalwart of their country, uh, who's been there and done it at the World Cup, yeah. leading them out. You know, now, the only thing about this, I don't know if you knew, you knew this, but they the lost actually two one in qualifying against South Africa. Then the referee was done for match fixing. Ah, that's right. Yes, and then they, they got a. Um, the replay. They got. A, they got a re- Did they get a replay? Yeah, they got yeah, a they replay. Got a replay. Yeah, and they right. won the replay, they won and the that took them above South yeah. Africa. That's right. So, like, you know, some they didn't but, qualify for this. You know, on their own accord, sort of merits in a sense. Well, if the referee was cheating, like he deserves to be punished. Mm. But what referee would ever do such a thing? Oh no, no. Uh, referees are just not that sort of people. They're very you definitely know, not. Definitely not. Take them always. Take them more of high ground. Um, but that actually happened as well in South America. That ha- that helped. Um, wasn't Argentina that helped? I think it might have helped Peru. Mm. Uh, there was something went on, and, and a, a result was changed. I don't think the referee was match fixing, but I think one of the other nations played a play and a player that they shouldn't have played. Basically, he might have been suspended, and they played him. And they were given a 3 0 win, and that helped them come through. So it's interesting the teams they got there have got to the World Cup. So I think maybe there's a bit of luck in the story. Side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just how, how things just materialise that they end up playing. They also on have uh, uh, Idrissa Gay and Tabby Swore. Kulabali from Napoli, who's a sought a... after from you know, a sick bed in Italy there. I know how much he will be crying out so that the people of Naples hear him that Cali Kulabali will end up at Chelsea. Yes, Mr. You know, under. The former Napoli manager could be, but um, well, still the Napoli manager, even though they've another manager who hasn't really quite started yet. But okay, I'm yeah. not saying about that. It's interesting that the Sari, um, the Sari rumours and all of Gallant pace again yeah. when Brenton arrived in Italy. That's right. So what we think's happened, folks, in the sport bubble is Brenton Hagen is actually an agent for Chelsea Football Club, and he's out there working alongside Chelsea. So if you need any Chelsea news, contact Brenton. Obviously, he's, he must be a secret agent, Jake. That's, that's why he's out there. That's um, he's peddling the stuff. Like he's peddling the stuff. Know? So we'll go. So. Colombia's going to win it. Yep. We don't can't decide between po- or Poland and Senegal, but Japan are going to come last. Um, and Senegal yes. and Colombia play last as well. That could be a huge game too. Massive game. I personally think here that with their experience and with this, the experience of this particular squad, that Poland will clinch second place. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see what happens. Um. We also just got a comment from Joe Buchanan of the Craig Adam Cowboys. Hello, Joseph. Um, who's talking about match fixing? And he said, "Those match fixing in Northern Ireland v Switzerland 
never forget it. That's obviously with a penalty this season. That wasn't a penalty. That was actually there that night. Was, uh, was it even inside the box? Um, <laughs> no. no, I think that was one of the things was outside the box. It wasn't a penalty, and, and the referee gave it. Um, certainly, yeah, that, that's obviously still left a sore point for Northern Ireland fans. Mm. Um, just on Switzerland, you have yourself a new fullback at Arsenal. Looks like Yeah, you happy yeah. with that? Yeah, because you know the age is there of him. The age is there, but I watched but, him outrun Jordi Alba the other and, night, and he also came on for Spur for Juventus against Spurs and changed the game. Remember? Yeah, yeah, when, yeah, when, yeah. Uh, You know, Juventus were looked as if they were out in the cold, and they came back to bat a goal there that that um, clinched it. You know, in the end for them at at uh, White Hart Lane, I was going to say at Wembley, Wembley yeah. but. Um, a very good sign and a shrewd piece of business again Sven Mislintet has shown his true colours here no longer Arsenal dabbling not only are they, have they got Licksteiner in they've pretty much uh, signed the deal for Socrates Papastavopoulos super well in there uh, be, from, yeah, we'll from Borussia Dortmund um, who's a good sign and again an experienced mm-hmm. defender they've brought in uh, Lucas Torreya very close to bringing him in from Sampdoria and plays playing for Uruguay look out for him he's actually a very good young player oh yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously Bert Leno again the goalkeeper from Leverkusen who is also likely to sign so there's three massive signs that are impending and there probably could be a few more with the Sporting Lisbon situation and if Arsenal do sell players they could I, I really like those signings for Arsenal um, because it's not as if Arsenal have gone out and fired stupid money at, right. at, at players. They're smart they, gone, they, they do seem like smart smart signs. This is saying it was free. Um, Socrates, I'm not pronouncing his first name, I'll get it. Tw- it? 16 million no, euros. Euro. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure the Blenno fee. But Gelson Martinez is obviously going to be free right. because he's no contract at Sporting. That would be a, a super sign for Arsenal. There's also the Freiburg defender who's Turkish, Turkish defender. Okay. Who his former club before he joined Freiburg have said that he's joining Arsenal and that they're going to be getting part of the fee now. This could be spoof. Yeah. You can't trust some of these things. So that would be another defensive. Now what that would suggest to me is that Mustafi's on his way out. If they bring probably in, so, yeah. If they bring in Licksteiner, Papasadopoulos... Likely that he'll stay, but if they bring in another defender... They'd also brought in the great defender in general. Mavropanos, who yeah. has been a superb sign, and I was over watching this game, and now he gets sent up against Leicester the next game. He's he's inexperienced, but he's a raw talent, and I yeah, think yeah. he could really, under Unai Emery, he could get the best of that. Exciting times for an Arsenal fan. Then. Oh yeah, always. Always, <laughs> always over uh, the summer, <laughs> yes. when they're top of the table by <laughs> alphabetical order. <laughs> now, um, we'll talk about cup football in a month. More or less, unless it's yeah. mad signings. But before we actually do move on, I want to talk a little bit about France because yesterday um, Adel Rami tried to get himself killed mm. by the French nation by hoofing um, Kylian Mbappe into the air and, and giving him a bit of a sore ankle. Sure. It looked pretty serious. Mbappe was quick to come out an hour, quick to come out an hour later and sort of dispel any rumours that he was badly injured and get for everyone to look after his friend Adel. I'd say Rami felt absolutely horrific. I'd say so. Yeah, um, after it. But while all this was happening, and that was all being announced, Atletico Madrid announced that they had signed, and, or sorry, agreed to sign Thomas Lamar mm. from Monaco. Um, what do you think, and we, we, I know we're, we're going to talk about signs, but what do you think that sort of implicates for Griezmann's future? I have the opinion that that is a signing to keep Griezmann. Well, look, the scene to be making the moves here, I don't know whether do they have the financial firepower given that they've just moved to a new stadium for a start mm. to maintain Griezmann and also bring in Lamar they brought in Diego Costa well officially last January yeah. um, who was a signing that you could say was to placate Griezmann someone supposed to play off for example they've also brought in now Lamar you know those that front three is very scary yeah and that like they also like they still have Saul and Koke and I'm sure Gabby's still going to be knocking around because he still looks like he can play away. They have Jimenez and Godin at the back. They're very they keen all black. Next season in La Liga, I'd love Atleti to win it again. I would love, I'd them love them to win the European Cup. Yeah, for Diego Simeone, you know, I would just I would just love that to to occur. But um, there's something in the back of my mind still saying Griezmann's going to leave Philip. I don't know what yeah. it is. Julian Lapetegui might be interested in buying him. Certainly, will he be interested in buying Sadio Mane? Because apparently that Sedan was interested in Mane yeah. before he went. And was who else was he interested in? Eden Hazard, maybe. Yeah. They're the rumours, like. Yeah, rumours. I don't know if Mane would, would leave Liverpool. I think he's, I think he'll say at least after the after Coutinho signing in January to stay with us, and then the following January leaving. You know, anything can happen, like. Yeah. But 
what do you reckon? Um, are you still going with who your um, Germany to win the World Cup, or have you changed? Or mm, no, still, you know, uh, Yogi Love come out commenting on Lopetegui's say uh, dismissal. You know, talked about how this is a a, a difficult moment for a country you know on the eve of a world cup you know deep Pilot down the deep pressure down, he's on. loving it but he's oh, piling yeah. the pressure on the pressure is something that germans just don't deal in ah, yeah, the just... only the only place you'll find pressure in germany is in tires you know <laughs> i'll be about it now, yeah, but right. um that is the reality this german team have been there and they've done i don't know how many times i've used that phrase it's overused now by me but their experience i think will see them through in russia okay I they'll be under look it's not going to be easy no, there'll no, be no, moments no. whereby they're under severe pressure the only question mark I have over them is Mario Gomez probably won't be their number one striker it's probably going to be Timo Werner or Thomas Muller or Thomas Muller could be yeah that's true now Thomas Muller of course goal scoring press Mario Gomez goal scoring press I think he might go with Werner what do you think because of the pace of the I pace. think it's all about pace now we're yeah. football up front and, and I think they need that yeah, yeah. Uzel is not pacing no. Muller not pacing but Uzel given the chance to fire a ball and an exquisite pass that he can do to someone with pace like Thomas Muller just, just unlocks not, the pace sorry not Thomas Muller um, team of Werner yeah. just. and that's something I'm excited about the only, that's the only part of the team that I'm worried about though at the same time yeah. Previously, they would have had Miroslav Klose, who was your guaranteed maybe four World Cup goals, and if those four World Cup goals could have won you the tournament. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Mario Gomez again would have been scoring the odd goal. Miller, of course, recently has been their go-to scorer, so yeah. he needs to have a very good World Cup. Werner needs to knock in a few goals, which I'm sure he has the ability to do. Still think they're going to win. Still think they've enough. Okay. But I hope that I'm proved wrong just for the I, for football. I, st- I went with um, Spain so I'm probably going to stick oh, I said Brazil at the start of the show I see Spain and Brazil in my head that I think will win but who I want to win is completely different. We're supporting Costa Rica for the sports battle. Hello Nurse Kerry. Hello Nurse Kerry. Keep an eye on Brenton. Yeah. Um, and Charlie Cole I'll, I'll rant that in two seconds because we're speaking about that at the start of the show. I would look we're obviously supporting Costa Rica so vamos los ticos and um, if they won it that would be absolutely mental and I've ordered a 5 foot 4 Costa Rican flag that's going to arrive tomorrow and a shout out to Kevin with his Uruguayan flag yes everyone up in Cookstown is wondering what flag that is they're all trying to find an issue with it that's Kevin Suarez he's, uh, Luis Suarez his long lost brother from Armagh yeah. um, Uruguay I would absolutely love to see someone like Uruguay or Colombia win it hmm. um, somebody mad is there a team that you would sort of think that is there a team? I know you said Germany, but is there another that you think will win it? Was a team that you'd absolutely love to win? Is there a team that you'd love to be supporting and get behind? Apart from obviously Costa Rica for the sports battle, but there's something that I like about the likes of Denmark. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm not European. I'm not biased against all other teams. No, no, no. You know from, but um. Yeah, something about Denmark that intrigues me. Sweden as well. I really like Emil Forsberg. So that's, I suppose, another you want somewhat to happy. Look. You know, in every group, you've sort of got the players you're looking out for, the teams yeah, that you're going to yeah, follow. Yeah. Of course, you'll be watching every game, but, you know, yeah. that you're going to prioritise. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, I'm refereeing a final on Saturday evening, so I'm probably going to miss, well, at least one game, you know, on oh, Saturday okay. evening. So. Call it off. Just yeah. a balance of your Um. Yeah, also today... Before we move on and we'll finish things up. Charlie, by the way, we did speak about Poland yep. at the start of the um, show, so you can go back over and watch that. And I'm putting it up on YouTube as well. So if you Basically, it, I think they're, they're in with a very good chance of coming second in Group H. Mm-hmm. And their biggest threat to second place is obviously Senegal. And do you think they'll beat either Belgium or England if, or Tunisia if they get through that group? Or Panama? A Poland, could they beat England? Yes. Could they beat Belgium? No. No. Fair enough. Poland will need to win the group then, I think. Yeah. Interesting. Whereas I think the likes of Senegal and Colombia could possibly beat England. But oh, I do yeah. think England, this England team, they said last night. But they beat Belgium, though. No, I think Belgium are or, much better. Yeah. Um, but Belgium's a team actually I'm looking out for. Yeah. You know, yeah. obviously. I've no issues with England either. I think this is, as I said last night on uh, the Group G video, and if you want to go back to our YouTube and check out all our videos, please do at the Sports Battle uh, at YouTube. This is an England team that you can't hate it. Like there's something likable about this English team. Do you know what I mean? I mean the players. You know, yeah. Something unlike. Un- 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 you know what? I mean, you know what I'm actually enjoying it. I, I really like Southgate. 
Yeah, he's, sort of he's, a, he's a classy operator. I've got a lot of time for him. And, you know, he's put in the hard graft to get where he is. You know, and he's not going to make a mess of it, like get involved in some sort of, you know, player transaction. Or oh, drinking like, pints of wine. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's not going to get involved in that. He, you know, I've been interested in reading some stories about him this week at school and that, you know, his old PE teachers, for example. Like, and he just he seems like a very ordinary, down to earth uh, man who I hope does very well with England. Now, yeah. this English English team has actually gone under the radar, but I found the, the press this time hasn't really hyped them up. No, they just tried to... Why do you think that is? Pick it Raheem Sterling. That's true. I, I think the English press and English fans and other fans, they just don't rate this English team, and I think that they... Because there's no real start, there's Harry Kane... And there's there's not the Lampards, the Gerrards, the Rooney's, Owen, those John people Terry, that are the Yeah. Yeah. This is a youngish team. I think the oldest player is actually young. He has an outstanding season. Manchester United fullback. He's thirty two, as well as Gary Cahill. I think it's quite a sensible team. Mm. I, I I still I think they could get to the quarterfinals, and then they'll play possibly Brazil or Germany, depending on where they come in their group. I still the Poland, Colombia or Senegal will cause them issues. I think they still think they can come through, but. You never know with this English team. Like we have Harry Kane and the Jimmy Vardy. If, 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 if Harry Kane, if Harry Kane scores goals, which he has obviously the ability to do in yeah. the backfall, if Raheem Sterling takes his chances, which he sometimes does, like he cost. Yeah. I know Man City didn't need the points in the Premier League, but he cost Man City a few games. Yeah, he missed clinching chances that would have just sealed the games. Yeah. Now he can't afford to do that for England because England are not Man City. No. And, and, then, and every every chances. point counts because it only is seven games potentially, so you that's need right. to and points are good for every shot. Then, every, yeah, every <clears throat> every shot will count. That's right. Um, another big news today before we finish up: the World Cup twenty twenty six has been announced for Mexico, Canada, and the USA. Yeah, and the first thing I did was I have a friend who's in Toronto at the moment working, and I said you can't come home until after that World Cup, so we can, we can all go <laughs> sports battle on Don't here. worry. Stay with him. I have Toronto. told the boss, I have told Sarah tonight that I'm starting to save, and yeah. Brett, listen to this as well, and any sports battle fans that want to come with us, start saving now, it's in eight, eight years' time, start saving, we'll all chip away, and then we'll all hoof off. To Mexico, Sounds Canada, glorious. and America for summer football. Sounds glorious. That would be abs- I would just I'd probably weep every day because I couldn't get over myself. Um, I am even more excited now that we've done this video mm. for what's going on. I don't know if I'll sleep tonight. I'll just watch videos on YouTube all night <laughs> and read magazines and read stories and read books. We haven't obviously got a chance to write anything or whatever, but I would advise if you get a chance tonight, just go across all the papers, all the sports websites you usually use. And I'll try and post some of my favourite articles up that I've read, some of my favourite previews, um, and, and go out and buy them as well, just get as much as you can, we can see all that information, like it just feeds the excitement, like I, oh, I just cannot wait, can't wait for all the go. I really hope that this is a really attacking World Cup like 2014 was. Mm-hmm. Well I think it will be, you know, I don't see anything that, there's only those few teams like the likes of Denmark who are more defensively minded. And are going to be because they just don't have the firepower up front to be able to score the opposition. The majority of teams here are quite attacking. Like we watched, we both watched independently Costa Rica the other night against Belgium. Now Belgium won the game comfortably in the end. Lukaku scored two great goals. Um, Batshuayi also got a goal. Yeah. Sorry, Bren, just to add to that feeling of sickness. And their other goal was scored by Drew Smith. Yeah. Now, even saying those names in the one team is like what the hell is going on? But Costa Rica. Lost the game convincingly. Did they give up attacking? No. No, they just kept going. It was, it was the it? fastest. I was like, for a moment, I thought, you know, the feed that I had on my computer was speeding the play. Up. Speeding the play yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just so fast, and that's what I'm excited for. Yeah. You know? I get your seat stuff. Edge your seat. We'll have our big, massive 5 foot 4 um, Costa Rica flag, so you'll be able to enjoy that. Folks, thanks for tuning in. Um, don't worry, this is going up on our YouTube anyway. Head, head over to our YouTube page. Just uh, type in the sports bubble and I'll put a link up on our Facebook as well or I might get Brent to do that even though he's sick in Italy but thanks very much Brent. Uh, head over and check it out because we're trying to build our YouTube page and that's what we're going to bring a lot of our stuff into mm-hmm. and get it going. Um, we've done previews for every group game plus last week's live shows up on it. You have about, what is it now, um, I would say about 16 or so, I mean that's pretty crap, about 
say 16 hours until kickoff or something like that. Slightly more, yeah. Slightly more. So you have plenty of time to go and watch all our content. If you watch it all, it won't take about three hours, but you'll enjoy it all. Like. Yes. Um, thanks for tuning in on at our, our live Facebook show. Check us out on Twitter as well, at, um, at the Sports Babble. If you have any comments or feedback or questions, just hit us on any of our social media pages. We'll get back to you pretty sharp. And we want more people talking to us and yeah. chatting to us because we want to exactly. build the Sports Babble and have more be involved. But um, Jake... Uh, enjoy trying to get to sleep tonight I don't think we're going to now because we're going to turn this off and then go and talk about the World Cup um, enjoy the World Cup You'll, we'll be back possibly Sunday night um, with some feedback video of what's going on for the first three or four days we'll do a little thing yeah. as well you know, it, it, throughout your life you're going to have plenty of football games but save for every World Cup because uh, there just aren't too many of them. yeah and, and you know what I've heard people saying that as they get older the World Cup didn't mean as much to them but I find that this World Cup means everything to me now. Neither yeah. Ireland are playing on it, so I, I, I can't lose anything on it. But if it costs Rica win it, I'll not be seen for months. Yeah. But enjoy the World Cup. Thanks for tuning in. See you on Sunday night. Good luck. Good night.